Hello, welcome to this uh, lecture video. So I am teacher Melai. And today we will be uh, still talking about using PSFPP in analyzing descriptive statistics. So as presented in our introduction, we are going to consider this outline. So in this video, our focus is to discuss the survey questionnaire. So in terms of what are the parts of the questionnaire and how to analyze the, the data. Okay, so let's go to the questionnaire. So this is the questionnaire. So in the, the questionnaire, so usually we uh, find the, the information about the questionnaire in the research methodology. So we have their research instruments. So it is where we discussed how many parts will be the questionnaire, what type will be the questionnaire, what is its validity and its reliability. Because in conducting research as much as possible, you have to make sure, you have to be sure that your instrument is valid and reliable in such a way that they will uh, there will be no questions about your analysis and interpretations and, of course, to your conclusions. So the questionnaire consists of two parts. So we have the first one, personal information. So it asks for the name, but here in our questionnaire, it is optional. And then followed by the age. So it is in bracket. So it is 13 to 16 years old and 17 to 20 years old. Sex is limited into, of course, the male and female. Current relationship status, it is in a relationship, not in a relationship. For the socioeconomic status, we have the following. We have a lot of money and properties and can buy whatever we wanted. Income is very sufficient for family's need and can save money. Income is just sufficient for the family, but could hardly save. Income is little, sometimes not enough for family's need. And the last one is income is very little, not always enough for the family's need. So it consists, as mentioned, it consists of two parts. The first part is the profile, which is limited into name, age, sex, current relationship status, and socioeconomic status. For letter B, so this is the life satisfaction scale. So you will be um, asking your respondents to rate the statements into one to seven scales where one corresponds to strongly disagree, Two disagree, three is slightly disagree, four neither agree nor disagree, five is slightly agree, six agree, and seven is strongly agree. So how many items do we have here? So we actually have five items or five statements stating that the first one, in most ways, my life is close to my ideal. The conditions of my life are excellent. I am satisfied with my life. So far, I have gotten the important things I want in life. And if I could live my life over, I would change almost nothing. So the questionnaire or the part of the questionnaire is a Likert scale questionnaire ranging. So the scale ranges, ranges from 1 to 7, 1 as a strongly disagree to seven a strongly agree. So the questionnaire on part two consists of five items. And in terms of its validity, so we can actually cite um, the author or who made the questionnaire. So the questionnaire is called the satisfaction with life scales. That is uh, referring to part two of the questionnaire. So it assessed the global life as satisfaction of adolescent constructed by Weiler et al. in 1985, which obtained a reliability of 0.84 for a test, retest reliability. 
and 0 0.57 to 0.75 for internal consistency. So for the validity, it is 0 0.78 to 0 0.93 for construct validity. So Yong check in 2013 utilized the same measure where they obtained a Cronbach alpha of 0 0.85. So in terms of its validity, so it is valid and it is from Diner et al. And it is also um, reliable. So based from the result of the reliability of Jung and Sheck, it is 0 0.85. However, since our authors here are both, uh, what do you call this? So the two 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 studies. So that's the original diner at all, and the other one is Lung and Sheck. So our foreign authors, there is still a need to check for validity, uh, reliability, by of course coming up with pilot testing. So you have to re recheck the Cronbach alpha because the authors are not Filipino authors or it is not uh, local authors and this will be used for local authors. However, um, in terms of uh, the result, which is 0 0.85, 0 0.85 is acceptable and it is considered reliable. So it is... Uh, we have we still have here some informations like how to interpret for the data. That's actually the second one that we need to consider. So if you're going to adapt a questionnaire, so you also need to check how to analyze the data. Because of course, here it claims that it can assess the global life satisfaction of adolescent. So you also have to consider that that the questionnaire is for adolescents. So you have to consider it fits your respondents. So the respondents of this study are adolescents. So here it is um, adding the result. So as mentioned here, the scores will be summed up and the higher the score, the higher the life satisfaction. So for the for the score interpretation, it is divided into eight categories and we say that it is extremely dissatisfied if the sum is from 5 to 9. If it is from 10 to 14, it is dissatisfied. 15 to 19 is slightly satisfied. 20 means it is neutral. 21 to 25, it is slightly satisfied. 26 to 30 is satisfied. 31 to 35 is extremely satisfied. So we actually have a separate video that discuss this guide for interpretation where we totally adapted how also Diner and Yong Shek um, analyze the data or analyze the result. So using this, so for instance, if we will consider like, let's say, in most ways, my life is close to my ideal. So let us consider, for instance, Microsoft Excel. So that we can show this. So assuming that so this is uh, the data. So assuming that the result of... Uh, or the answer or the responses or the following. So five, so which means I slightly agree. I, uh, let's say six, seven, five, and five. So if we will encode that in our Microsoft Excel, so for instance, this is respondent number one, and then item number one, So this is also discussed in a separate video, but just to review, item one, item two, item three, 
item four and item five. So here uh, we will encode, for example, the responses. So it is five, six, seven, five, five. Now, if we will consider the method taught by or rather reported by the two authors mentioned, the, the diner and Leong Shek, then it means that we're going to get the sum. So in entering for the formula of uh, the sum here, so let us uh, check for the sum. So this is equal to SUM, open parenthesis. And then you have to select responses in item one to five, close parenthesis and enter. So 28. Going back to the questionnaire. So how will we interpret what is 20, what is 28? So using our questionnaire, let us make this bigger first. Let's consider what is this. So 28 falls within 26 to 30, which, mean, which means that respondent one is satisfied. So she is satisfied with her life. Now, what if we also opted to change the... We also want to, to change for the guide for interpretation and instead of... Uh, making use of uh, the sum, we will consider the mean. So we have here. Another one. So let us see. Another guide for interpretation. So let us, what if we will use this guide? So 1 to 1.49, if the mean is 1 to 1.49, it means that it is extremely dissatisfied. 1.5 to 2.49 or 1.50 to 2.49 is dissatisfied. 2.5 to 3.49 is slightly satisfied. 3.5 to 4.49 is neutral. 4.5 to 5.49 is slightly satisfied. 5.5 to 6.49 satisfied, 6.5 to 7 is extremely satisfied. So once, of course, for instance, if you adapted the questionnaire and you wanted to modify how to interpret the data. So since we have a seven scale and we wanted to know the life satisfaction by also considering seven scales by computing for the mean, then it means that you really need to do the pilot testing. Okay, so if, uh, for instance, um, we are going to use uh, this method, so what will we do? So let's go back to our data. So this is our data. Or rather, this is the encoded data for respondent one. So which means we are not going to consider the sum anymore, but what we will do is to get for the mean. So that is equal sign, average, open parenthesis, and select items one to five, then click. Okay, so it is 5.6, round off to full number, it is six, or simply just look at the value where 5.6 falls. So it is within this, it means that the respondent one is satisfied with a mean of 5.6. So that is how to analyze the data. So first, you must know you, you must know the parts of the questionnaire. You also need needs to know whether the questionnaire is a valid or reliable. So you have to check for that before using the questionnaire. And in case that you cannot find for validity, uh, for reliability rather, so you can do pilot testing 
especially if uh, the instrument, as mentioned, is made by a foreign author. Or in case that you want to change the uh, guide for interpretations or how to analyze uh, the data. So you always need to ask how will this instrument, how will the instrument measure what it intends to measure? So it can measure, this questionnaire can measure life satisfaction scale by getting the sum if I will adopt the, the guide of, of uh, Jung, Jung and Sheck. So let us just uh, check for its name. I might be... Um, Yung Eng Shek and Diner. However, if you want to modify it as uh, shown by getting for the mean, then you can also do that. As long as you make, you make sure that you have to do the pilot testing. So this is all for this video as mentioned. To sum it up, before using a questionnaire, if you want to adopt a questionnaire, it means that you have to check for its validity and reliability, and it can measure what it intends to measure. So you also must need to know how to analyze the data, how it can measure the data. So thank you for watching.